So uh, the show opened up with Seth coming down to the ring, and he essentially called out Sammy, and he said, uh, let me guess, they made you return that briefcase when you got to the building. Sammy said, yeah, pretty good guess. He was wondering how he knew that. And essentially, Seth tells him, I was all beat up. I don't know if I could have beaten Priest if he cashed in. So I want to thank you for stealing the briefcase. And the reason I knew that they made you return to the briefcase was I was in Adam Pierce's office afterwards, and I asked him if I could grant you a World Heavyweight Championship match anytime you want it. Name the time and place. And Sammy's kind of like, well, you know, I, I, I will one day win that title, but I want to win it from a man who's at 100%. And Seth takes off his glasses. That's when you know he's serious. It's like when I adjusted my chair. He says, come on, cut the crap. Neither of us are ever 100%. So listen, I'm telling you, you can have a championship match. Name the time and place. And Sammy looks around and the crowd's like, yeah! And he goes, tonight! And I thought, what? You're doing Sammy Zayn getting a World Heavyweight Championship match against Seth Rollins tonight on this show. Live. Okay. Like, okay, whatever. It didn't scream angle alert to you? You know what it screamed? It screamed a run-in by Drew. Well. And spoiler alert, that didn't happen. No. But anyway. It was good. They cut to Finn backstage. He's talking to the Judgment Day. And they, they cut to Finn, and he's going, you know, there's a great deal of evidence that the pyramids are actually 12,000 years old. I'm like, what is happening here? And then, you know, they're all talking about, oh, you know what's, you know what I think when I think of something old? My dad. Dumb's all happy his dad got beat up. So Priest comes in, he's all mad, and he says, tonight we need to handle the new day. Make things right. By the way, they just found a new pyramid in Indonesia, 15,000 years old. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Where's Finn Balor when I need him? New Day versus Judgment Day. Eat on Xavier. Makes the big comeback. And uh, they did this weird WWE thing, which I just love. The secret rule is, if you aren't legal in a tag match, and you hit a guy who is legal, it's a disqualification. They pull the trigger on this rule once every five years or so. But if you're going to be illegal and hit the legal guy, you have to do it behind the referee's back. It's considered cheating in a tag title match in WWE, or a tag match. And so uh, Priest ends up hitting Woods behind the ref's back, and then Finn hits a double foot stomp and wins. And they kind of like play it up like they were cheating, but it was like, this was a totally fair win for these heels. So uh, no run in, nothing. They beat him. Drew's angry. He leaves. I thought for sure. Angle alert. He'll be back. We had Nakamura versus Tozawa. And it is quite easy to forget that Akira Tozawa is freaking awesome. But man, he was so awesome in this two-minute match. And he got pinned. And then Nakamura was mocking him. And he turns around and there is Otis. And he bails. And they will fight next week. Shinsuke Nakamura versus Otis. Yes. Adam Pierce does a promo talking about the four guys in the four-way. We talked ad nauseum about the four-way. I don't need to recap it again. But at this point, Miz and Ivar appears to be next week. Winner gets Gunther. Tozawa apologizes to Alpha Academy for losing. They're like, dude, you, hey, you're just you're starting your training. You don't need to jump right into a Nakamura. But you know what? Refocus. Get ready for your Heritage Cup match tomorrow. We're going to be there in your corner. Then Maxine shows up. She's all excited for this women's battle royal for a title shot. Diamond Mine sign their raw contracts, their raw wrestlers, and then DIY shows up. They agree to an NXT dream match, DIY versus Creed's. And they had a good match, but, you know, it's raw. This is the new Creed's. They don't get all week to practice the match. They're going to have to get up to speed soon, especially well, Brutus. Ease them in with DIY. But they did, a, they did largely a good job. And finally... Brutus yanks Ciampa out of the ring. The ref is distracted. Ludwig Kaiser shows up and kicks Johnny. Creed's hit the combo. Brutus ball for the pin. The Creed still undefeated on Monday Night Raw, and it sets up Imperium versus DIY. Becky does a promo, and she's talking about the Battle Royal, 
and Nia sneaks in. And she says, you know, no one's going to be able to throw me over the top tonight. Which means I'm going to win. And man, it's going to be the happiest I've been since I broke your face. And Becky calmly looks at her and she says, you know, it's funny, is you broke my face and I went on to main event WrestleMania. And what happened to you? Oh yeah, you got fired. Well, it's nice to have you back. She walks off. I LOL'd. So then we had the Women's Battle Royal for the number one contendership. Chelsea Piper, Natty Naya, Nikki Cross, Katana Chance, Caden Carter, Shayna Baszler, Raquel, Zoe, Tegan, Maxine, Ivy Nile, and Indy Hartwell. Oh. Becky is supposed to be in, but Zia Lee attacks her, and Zia Lee is then banished from the Battle Royal, and Becky cannot compete. So they're both out. Nikki Cross, God bless her, has the worst gimmick of 2023. She stands in the ring, a statue. Everybody bites around her for a while. And then Nia and Raquel just look at her and they're like, let's just throw her out. And they throw her out and she is eliminated. It's been months. Months. Well, paycheck's still clearing and she's going to school. She's got that going for her. Where a lot in, of time for that. No, she graduated. I thought she was taking i uh... I'm pretty sure she has graduated. Yeah, I think Is she that why she's so but... angry? She's taking, like, post-college courses to become, what, what do, you, what do you get after your bachelor's? I don't Going know. Going for a doctorate or something? I don't know. Take their money and do what it, do whatever they want you to do. If they want you to stand there like that, fine. She was well, actually way better as not a superhero or whatever that gimmick was. Dude, when she was, they blew it with her with uh, Sanity. Her as the insane person, but they wanted Alexa Bliss to be the insane person when it came to the Wyatt family, and she just kind of got worked out of that mix. That's her best deal she's got going on, and maybe it is going to lead to something, but I don't know at this point if anybody's going to care. It doesn't seem to be, you know, taking hold DJ, right now. DJ, listen, are you watching the show? I am telling you. <laughs> I, the superhero thing was death. Yes. This is worse than death. Well. Literally, her character is factually dead. Yes, but her name isn't Nikki Ash, which was really close to Nikki, you know, and that's what everybody called her. because. That's okay, he's not watching was. the show. Well, DJ, trust me on this one. This is <laughs> miles, miles worth. Think of all of the horrible things that I've seen in this business over the last year, and this is what I believe is the worst gimmick of the year. So anyway... <laughs> Comes Sarai down used to walk through a portal. You remember that? Comes down to uh, Baszler and uh, Stark, and actually they had a they had a great battle on the. Uh... Don't start that. Don't start that. Come no, to WWE, Julia. I see it. No, don't do, it, don't do that. It's one one. <laughs> Look Although, at the women who are in this battle royal all getting a chance. Although Nikki, Storm. I would not have given all of these women a chance, and that's me. Nikki Storm, Fordham, former stardom wrestler, you know? So Zoe and uh, and Baser had a great brawl on the apron. And Zoe DDT'd her on the apron after super kicking her multiple times. She won. Zoe Stark will get a shot at Rhea Ripley for the women's title at the Survivor Series pay-per-view. I like it. Yeah. And speaking of like, I will hear nothing otherwise. Sami Zayn and Seth Rollins for the world title was a great match. Okay? No, Brian. No. No, had no, he no, no, Brian. I almost called you Dave. Listen to me. Okay? <laughs> WWE has a thing that they do with main events. We've seen it a thousand times. They, you know, the tables, the distractions, the interference... The uh, pattern way they do the last few minutes or whatever. This was nothing like that. This was Sami Zayn was fighting for the World Heavyweight Wrestling Championship against Seth Rollins. And they went out there and they wrestled. And they are great wrestlers. And there was no interference. There was no smoke and mirrors. There was no Gaga. This was a wrestling match where they were both allowed to do, and they're doing stuff that they don't even do regularly. Remember Sammy used to do that thing where, like, he would go run in and the guy would move outside, and so he jumps up onto the top rope and backflips back in? I don't remember the last time he did that. He pulled that out here. He was great. 
in this match. Seth Rollins was great. And the story is, they're both baby faces. Sammy knows this guy has a bad back. He has many opportunities to go after this guy's back. But he's a nice guy, and so he doesn't. Until finally, they end up out on the apron, and Seth tries to give him a pedigree on the apron. And, and Sammy is forced to backdrop his way free. Seth lands on the apron. His back is shot. Well, now he's trying to make his comeback. He's holding his back. He's got all the tape. But finally, he goes for whatever. Sammy reverses it. He goes for, and I quote, the lion tamer. He then switches that to a full crab. Well, Seth is crawling for this back and screaming in pain. He's trying to get the ropes. Sammy pulls him back into the middle of the ring, but in doing so, he loses his balance. He falls forward, but he doesn't let go. And he tries to stand up and turn the thing again. And Seth cradles him and pins him clean in the middle of the ring. I loved, loved this match. And then just yesterday on the show, it's going, golly, you know, all they do is they keep having the Judgment Day interfere. You know, it's okay to have a clean finish and interfere after the match. That's exactly what they did. They had the clean finish. And then the Judgment Day hits the ring and... First, Jey Uso runs out to make the save. He gets a big pop. Cody runs out to make the save. The place goes nuts. They're having this giant brawl. All the nerds come out. They're trying to break it up. And finally, Pierce grabs the mic and he goes, Stop it! You want games? And as soon as he said games, the crowd goes nuts because they know exactly what he's going to say. And he goes, Fine! At Survivor Series, you guys, you guys, it's War! And this is how the Triple H War Games thing. The place goes crazy. And as Rips soon as he says the glasses it, glasses too. They cut to JD McDonald. JD's like, oh, like his his life's gonna end in War Games. And then they cut some of the other guys. They're like they're still mad and angry. And then they cut to Cody. He's he could not have had a bigger <laughs> smile on his face to hear that he's in War Games. The last half hour of the show. You know what it was. What was it? You know what, guys? Some of you ate it, but I don't care. Cinema. Ooh. God, the last you know half hour was, was great. Brian? It was great. You know what it was? It's pro wrestling. That's what it was. Sure was. And, and that, when you do interference finishes all the time, you know, you lose some of the effect on it. You know, the hope is you do more things like this. It It makes more heat for when you do pull things like this out. And one of the things about having the brawl afterwards was it diffused all of the heat out of two baby faces who just had a heated confrontation over the World Heavyweight title. And Sammy probably in his mind thinking, that guy got a lucky pin on me, slipped up. All that goes out the window because you have that brawl at the end, which, again, Adam Pierce did a great job selling right down to the cin cinematic way. He had to look at the camera because that's what you do, and he tears the glasses off and he says it. I thought it was great. It was really nice to see those two guys go out there and just have one hell of a match to end the show. I thought God. it was really cool. Man, poor DJ is suffering now. Imagine if they did this on NXT. <laughs> Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. 
thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, tens of thousands of hours of audio, all for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.